Hey everyone, so I wanted to explain in a few minutes how to correctly measure the capacitance of your water fuel cell. This cell here is a replication of stands. The geometry and the materials are all the same, but rather than having 11 tubes, I've only got six, but the tube geometry is the same, really what I'm saying. And the distance, um, the thickness of the deller in here. So first off, when you measure a cell, use distilled water. That'll give you a nice stable reading. And these meters work really well. You can get them online for probably 10 bucks. So when I measure this with distilled water, you see right now I'm getting about 186 picofarads. When I measure with tap water, I get something like 8,000 picofarads. And when I put my hand towards it, I wrap my hand around the cell, you can see the capacitance changes a little bit. With distilled water, it only changes about maybe 2% at the most. Um, but with tap water, I, I've seen changes as much as 10% in capacitance just by moving my hand around the cell. The reason why that happens is because the cell is actually capacitively coupling to my hand or to any nearby object. Capacitance will change if you put it on a different surface. You know, if I put this on a wood table or a metal table or a concrete floor, that will all change the capacitance. So that's one thing to keep in mind. When we look at Stan's cell, we'll see that he used a really thick outer sleeve that was Delrin. I don't know what the dimensions are. Somebody out there probably does, but it's got to be at least a half an inch thick right there. And the other thing he did was he used an aluminum band around all of his connections. I've got that picture too. There's his cell upside down with that aluminum banding. So, if we go to the tech brief, this is on page 3-16. It says, insulated housing 72 prevents voltage coupling to water bath. So there's the drawing you see, 72 electrical insulated housing. And what he's saying is that prevents capacitive coupling of any nearby object. It gives you much more stable capacitance, uh, which allows you to maintain and achieve resonance much easier. So I believe he does also state that that is Delrin here in the tech brief. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. This is on page 3 dash. Um, 3-10, I believe. 3-11. So it says, encapsulating resonant cavity in Delrin, Delrin material insulator, blah, blah, blah. That's one important thing to keep in mind. Uh, if you're just trying to use this with tap water, and you take a measurement, and you think that's what the capacitance is, try distilled water, and you'll get a much better reading. And you might be surprised the, how different the frequency, the resonant frequency calculations turn out to be when you do that. Um, there's more to the story here. You know, the aluminum shielding around here is important. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I had known somebody that got this to work probably about five years ago. It may have been longer than that now. And he got really sick. And he noticed every time he ran the cell for 10 or 20 minutes, he'd get sick. So we need to shield these. They do, when they're working, um, produce a low energy radiation. And they produce it at really high frequencies. From the math I've done, we can see frequencies, uh, if I remember correctly, up to, I think it was 5 gigahertz inside the cell. And that's something we'll have to talk about later on. But yeah, possibility of high frequency, low energy radiation, and it needs to be shielded. Not only that, but the cell needs to be shielded to prevent capacitive coupling. And when we do that, we will stabilize the capacitance and make resonance easier to find and maintain. That's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.